a guy was having shalom bias problems, and he calls his Rebbe, and the Rebbe says, why don't you buy flowers for your wife? And he comes home Arab Shabbat and says, my Rebbe said I should get these for you. You know, idiot. You know, what are you doing? You missed the whole point. I, but you could say, yeah, but he, what do you mean? But he did it. But he got the flowers. Didn't he, didn't he check the box of getting flowers for your wife? He checked that box. No. You missed the actual currency of what counts in relationships. It's, the, it's that, did it come from you? It's the Ava. Is this something that you wanted? This is, the, this is the really the, the critical point here. There are things you have to do in relationships. The goal is to make the things you have to do into things you want to do. To make your I have to's, I want to's. I know, uh, you know, it's natural for me, unfortunately, right? But I say, okay, I have to go to shul. Oh, where are you going? I have to go to shul. I have to go daven. And somebody, I once heard this one. Somebody said, like, stop saying I have to. It's like, I, I get to. Now, that might not fare so well, like, during, like, bedtime and dinner time. And, you know, it's like, it's chaos in the house. And I'm like, okay, I get to go to shul. You know, like, that won't, that won't go over so well for my family, I don't think. But, um, but the concept that of turning the I have to's into I want to's, where there's a passion, a desire. I'll tell you, sorry, I had a couple over, a young couple, and, uh, you know, they, they have so much potential. I see it in them. So much so, I said to them, I said, guys, I want you to come and stay for Shabbos. They came many times Friday night, but when they come Friday night, they drive. I said, I want you to come and experience a full Shabbos. See what a full Shabbos is like. So come stay over. Now, that's a little bit weird, right? Because what do you mean? But we live 10-minute drive. Why would we sleep in your house? That's odd. It's not like we're coming from out of town. I said, no, I want you to experience full. So they came for a full Shabbos start to finish, um, and uh, one of the couple, one of the couple uh, kept the Shabbos all the way through. The other one decided in the middle, they already decided before, the other one decided, I'm not really, I'm going to be coming and going, and, and that other, the other uh, spouse did. They were driving, they were coming back and forth, they're still participating, but you know, not, not going to be Shabbos. So afterwards, a little bit of like, I really wanted them to experience a full Shabbos together as a couple. Now, you never know, it's a story, you never really, really, you never know what impact something makes. You never, ever know. About two months later, this is going back two weeks ago, I see the guy in shul. Now, he was coming every Shabbos, every Shabbos morning to the village shul, not walking distance. And then he stopped coming Shabbos, and I'm like, now he, doesn't, now he doesn't even come to shul on Shabbos. You know what I mean? Like, I think I, I, think I turned him away from, from like, Yiddishkeit when I had him for Shabbos. Like, things have gone, gone downhill since then, you know? I see him during the week. He looks at me with, like, kemat tears in his eyes. Like, it was, like, so heartfelt and so emotional. And he stares me in the eyes like I thought he was going to propose or something. I mean, it was <laughs> so emotional. And he looks at me, and he says, Rabbi, we kept Shabbos. Now, I should have said, like, wow, that's amazing. But I, but I was so caught off guard, so surprised. I was like, what does that mean? I, I, what, what, does that, what do you mean you kept Shabbos? He's like, we kept Shabbos. I'm like, it, can you explain? He says, we cooked beforehand for hours. We taped all the light switches. We tore all our paper, our, our toilet paper first. Because he, he read a book on, like, what? He said, and we did everything. We, he said, and we sat there the whole Shabbos, no phones, nothing, and we had such deep, meaningful conversations, just the two of them. Since then, he hasn't come to Shul on Shabbos. He left me a voice note uh, yesterday. I picked it up this morning, I listened to it, telling me how he found a Shul near his house, and now he walks 15 minutes, 30 minutes, depending on which one he goes to. He walks, and like they're, they're keeping Shabbos. What's so moving about it was the, the love. It was like, it was like you know, he just, met, he just met like his wife. It was like this feeling of like, we kept Shabbos and we, like, we fell in love, like we love it. We got to experience that his whole life. They always had some version of Shabbos, but to really experience it, he said, was so powerful. And to see that the I have to became an I want to, to see how he fell in love with Shabbos, Yiddishkeit's in a relationship. The emotion, this is the currency, the love. 